I'm Professor Stephen Beattie, based here at the Macular Pigment Research Group in Waterford Institute of Technology and at the Institute of Eye Surgery in Whitfield Clinic. Here in the Macular Pigment Research Group, we are interested in a pigment at the back of the eye. We see through the eye, but the eye receives the vision on a thin film of tissue at the back of the eye known as the retina. And the center of the retina is known as the macula. And the macula is responsible for central vision, detailed vision, and color vision. So if you don't have your macula, or if your macula is diseased, you can't read, recognize faces, watch television, or drive. This pigment, which covers your macula, is known as macular pigment, and it's derived entirely from diet. So if you don't eat certain fruit and vegetables, you will have no macular pigment. And this macular pigment does two things. First, it absorbs blue light before the blue light hits the retina. And secondly, it's a powerful antioxidant. What an antioxidant is, it's simply a molecule which quenches or neutralizes free radicals. And free radicals are damaging molecules. So in other words, this pigment at the back of the eye, to summarize so far, absorbs blue light before the blue light hits the retina and neutralizes damaging free radicals. And why is this important? This is important for two reasons. First, for vision in normal people. And secondly, in order to prevent a disease known as age-related macular degeneration. First, I'm going to talk about vision. Vision refers to focusing an image on your central retina. The center of the macula does not have receptors for blue light. So there's no point in blue light being focused on the central retina. But furthermore, the blue light actually is defocused in the central retina because of a condition known as chromatic aberration. Therefore, blue light not only is useless for vision, it also blurs vision through chromatic aberration. Secondly, blue light, it is the blue wavelengths which are scattered and cause glare. So if you can absorb your blue light before the blue light hits your central macula, your central retina, you will actually A, improve your vision, and B, reduce any glare that you're experiencing. And that's why you see people like Bono wearing yellow sunglasses, because yellow absorbs blue light just like the pigment at the back of the eye known as macular pigment. Now we're going to talk about how this pigment at the back of the eye, which as I've said is entirely of dietary origin, is yellow in color and therefore absorbs blue light, how it also reduces your risk of getting a condition known as age-related macular degeneration. And if you do have age-related macular degeneration already, how it prevents it from progressing. Age-related macular degeneration is the result of cumulative lifetime exposure to blue light. So the more exposure you've had to blue light, and when I say blue light, I just mean normal light, but the blue wavelengths of that light, the higher your risk of getting age-related macular degeneration. And this has been shown time and time again in experiments. Secondly, age-related macular degeneration is also the result of what's known as oxidative stress. And oxidative stress simply refers to damage to tissues by unstable molecules. And these unstable molecules are known as free radicals. And all a free radical is is a molecule which is lacking an electron in its outer orbit. So what it does is, because it's agitated, because it's lacking an electron, so if this is a free radical here, it wants to be neutralized, it wants to feel good, so it steals an electron from this molecule. But the problem with that is this molecule is now damaged. So this molecule is now lacking an electron, so it steals one from this molecule, and the chain reaction goes on, and this damages your retinal tissue. Therefore, macular pigment, because it absorbs blue light, and because blue light causes age-related macular degeneration, if we have pre-receptorial filtration of blue light, you will reduce your risk of getting this macular degeneration and of it progressing. But secondly, the macular pigment neutralizes, quenches these free radicals, and therefore also ameliorates the condition through that mechanism. So to put it in, to put it in short, Macular pigment prevents age-related macular degeneration both passively by preventing free radical production in the first place by filtering blue light, but also actively by neutralizing the free radicals when they are produced. And this is why it's been shown in the ARED study that if you give antioxidant supplements, you will actually 
reduce the risk of vision loss in age-related macular degeneration. Now, unfortunately, in the ARED study, they didn't use macular pigment supplements because they weren't available at the time, and they just used vitamin C, vitamin E, and zinc in doses which aren't allowed by European Union regulations. So it would seem much more sensible, therefore, to use antioxidants which are relevant to the macula and not only work actively by neutralizing free radicals, but also work passively by preventing the blue light hitting the photoreceptors in the first place and causing free radical production. And many studies are now emerging that in order to maximize your macular pigment, centrally and peripherally, you don't just need two of the three macular carotenoids. You need all three. Macular pigment, as I've said, is made up of lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. And they're entirely of dietary origin. Lutein and zeaxanthin are found in a typical diet. Mesozeaxanthin is also of dietary origin, but not in a typical diet. Now, mesozeaxanthin is made in the retina from retinal lutein. But some people have an inability to actually convert the lutein to mesozeaxanthin. And this is a sizable proportion of the population. So it's unsurprising that research that has recently come out from our research group has shown that people who have a central dip in their macular pigment, so in other words, their macular pigment, instead of being shaped like a mountain, is shaped like a volcanic mountain with a crater at the top. Now, mesozeaxanthin is the predominant carotenoid at the very center. But if you are unable to convert your lutein to mesozeaxanthin, you don't have a shape like this, you have a shape like that. And the only way to ensure that supplementation increases your macular pigment across the spatial profile of the macular pigment is to use a supplement that contains lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. And this will have a twofold benefit. Number one, you're increasing your macular pigment centrally, where vision is at its sharpest, and therefore you're most likely to yield a benefit in terms of reducing glare and also enhancing contrast sensitivity and visual acuity. But secondly, it's precisely at the very epicenter where oxidative stress does its most damage because free radical production is greatest at that point. And that's why you do need mesozeaxanthin. That's why you do need your macular pigment to be augmented, to be increased at the very center. To summarize, macular pigment is entirely of dietary origin. It's made up of three carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. Lutein and zeaxanthin are found in a typical diet. Mesozeaxanthin is not. To be sure that you get augmentation and increase in your macular pigment in response to supplements, you need to supplement with all three, lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. There's no point in just having two parts of this three-part jigsaw. You need all three parts. The reason that you need all three parts is A, to ensure that your macular pigment does increase across its spatial profile, and B, to ensure that it does increase at the very center. And the advantage of this is that A, if you increase it at the very center, your vision will be uh, enhanced, made excellent, both in terms of reducing glare and in terms of improving your contrast sensitivity and visual acuity, but B, by increasing your macular pigment at the very center and across its spatial profile, something that can only be done by supplementing with lutein, zeaxanthin, mesozeaxanthin, only in that way can you be sure that you are maximizing the protection against damaging blue light and therefore maximizing protection against development of age-related macular degeneration and progression of this blinding disease.